So, all right, joining us now is Patricia Shapira from Love, Inc. Thanks for coming back into the studio. Sure, thank you for having me, as always. Yeah, for those who might not know what Love, Inc. is all about, why don't you kind of tell us about it in a nutshell. Yeah, um, in a nutshell, what we uh, serve is um, folks in need, and our mission is to mobilize local churches to help folks who have found themselves on some difficult times. Yeah, so in what ways do you offer assistance? Do, do people approach you or are names given to you? How does that work? Yeah, so we really try to encourage people to participate in getting out of the situation that they're in, so we invite them to contact us. So we never contact them first. Mm -hmm. um, they reach out to us and say, you know, I have a problem you know, with a security deposit or I don't have enough food to eat, clothes, I can't pay my utilities. So we invite them in to do an in-person intake for about an hour because we're trying to build that relationship, right? Rather than give that handout, we want to find out how they got into that situation and what we can do to work together with them to help them get out of it. Yeah. And then you, you said you work with area churches to coordinate uh, yep, with yep. them too? Yep, so, um, we coordinate through area churches. We work with organizations like Oxford Orient Fish, um, with the Pregnancy Center, with Neighborhood House, I mean all sorts of, um, we have 22 partner churches and so we reach out, for example, we have some ministries in some area churches so we reach out that way like for our closed closet which is at Oxford Free Methodist Church. So that's how we try to mobilize churches to help people, mm -hmm. help us help people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've noticed, uh, I think we have a flyer hanging up out front but uh, I love how there are area churches that say on certain nights of the week you can come here for a hot meal mm -hmm. and each yep. church offers that on a different day of the week so they're not overlapping which I think is awesome and I, I think that's such a great service to the community and you know I know it's very it's got to be very hard for families to approach to, to admit they need help and approach you what what can you say to these families that are hesitant to to ask for help I mean, I think we can probably, if we all look at ourselves, everybody has been upon hard times at one time in their life. It doesn't, I mean, everybody needs a hand up at one time. So there's no shame in asking for help yeah. at all. We have the biggest hearts. We, we want to just help people get out of the situations that they find themselves in. Yeah. So how, how does this happen? How, how are you funded? How is it possible that you can offer this help? Um, we are funded through um, donations from community partners, from individual donors, um, sponsorships for our events, um, grants that we receive. So we're always out there hustling to get you know <laughs> money yeah. to, to pay for things. But yeah, because we really feel that the work that we do is really important. So um, we're just always out there trying to find funding to get it done because it's an important job to do. Yeah. For a small organization like us, there are lots of large ones but um, we feel like we can make a, a real good impact locally. Yeah. Now the timing of your appearance is no coincidence. You have a major <laughs> fundraiser coming up. Well, we do. Tell us about that. Yep, so it's our second annual Share the Love event. It's at Indianwood um, Golf and Country Club, and it is on Saturday, April 6th. We're really excited about it. We're going to have um, pastor, the former pastor from Lake Point Community Church, Bob Holt, as a speaker. Um, we're going to have some great live auction items. We're going to have a professional auctioneer. Um, we have a hot air balloon ride that we're going to be auctioning off. A week in Port Aransas. I'm trying to look at the list. Um, what else? Some preseason lion tickets. Ooh. So yeah, we're really excited cool. about that and some other cool stuff as well. Yep. That'll I be a big there. one this year. The, yes, the I know, right? Tickets. Yeah. I was there last year and uh, oh, there it is. the thing yeah. that <laughs> struck me is it was so glamorous. Like yes, being at Indianwood and everyone yes. dressed up and looking Oh, nice. there's my husband. <laughs> <laughs> he looks so handsome. That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so what will uh, describe uh, what people will experience uh, during this glamorous night? Yeah, it's going to be, um, you know, dining, cocktails, the live auction, um, and just you know, sharing some stories about our partnership between um, the community and um, community churches. So, yeah, mm -hmm. we're really excited about it. Yeah. Really excited about it. What's on the menu? Um, <laughs> it's it's a pl it's a plated it's plated. So okay. it's a sit down. Wow. So it's not a buffet wow. this year. And I believe it's going to be um, steak and chicken. Ooh. Yeah, so it's going to be fancy. It's, it's going to be fancy. Gonna be there anyway. Yes, no, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Would yeah. you describe this event as your largest fundraiser of the year? Yep, because what we have found is it's it's good to have a major event like this to have a signature event, but most of our funding comes from 
one-on-one um, -on -one relationships with people. So we're trying to ignite more passion in the community for um, folks who have the deeper pockets to give, mm -hmm. um, but we're also you know, opening this up to the community at, at large as well. But we're just, as we try to have those one-on-one -on -one relationships with people to help them, we're finding um, the best way to um, raise large amounts of money is for folks who really believe in what we do. And so we try to do that one-on-one -on -one as well. But this one fundraiser is, is our signature event. That's awesome. Yeah. Are you still uh, headquartered at the church on Drainer there? Yes, yep, at Lake Point Community Church, we sure are. Talk about your relationship with them. Yeah, oh, it, it's fantastic. I mean, we have so many, like I said, we have 22 partner churches, and it's wonderful when um, the partner church knows what we do. They actually get folks who call them for help, and they can say, hey, that's not our area of expertise why don't you call Love Inc? And that's what makes us really happy because that's why we're there. So the, the church is benevolent and wants to help, but we have the expertise in that area, so we want them to forward those folks to us. But whenever we need, we're actually reaching out to some of our partner churches to do a hygiene drive. So it's wonderful, like it's the relationship again that makes everything work between um, our donors and our board members and our volunteers and the community at large and our churches as well. Hmm. Yeah. What kind of staff do you have? Who's uh, working so in your So there's office? three of us. So I'm the director, and we have a clearinghouse coordinator who um, is the one who makes all the final decisions on how we can best um, leverage our resources to the mm -hmm. folks that come in, and then a donor development person who's trying to um, have us be more intentional with those relationships with our donors. Mm. Awesome. You got yeah. any questions? I, I don't <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing all the talking. No, 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 it's, it's okay. fine. I know. It's fine. Were you, um, wait, Kim, are you here? What? No. I know, <laughs> I know, I know. I, I'm just learning all that I can about loving. It's because Kim is a new board member. We're very excited Ooh. to announce that she's on our board. <laughs> well, what a blessing. Brand new. Yeah, yeah, and we're really, we're really thrilled yeah. about that. We're still always looking for new board members um, because we really have a passion for what we do. Yeah. Um, you can ask us, Kim, about how many people we helped last oh, year. Oh, here we go. Oh, you know, there you go. Yeah, how many people? How many people did you help last year? So last year we um, helped 387 families. Wow. Um, and individuals were, we were really happy was 214 of them were brand new, which means those were folks who hadn't reached out to mm -hmm. us in the past. Wow. And so we were really excited to have those folks find out about us and reach out to us. Wow. We um, made and received over 4,800 phone calls last year, which is wow. a lot, all with our volunteers volunteers and um, we presented the community or folks in need with 40 over forty three hundred dollars in gift cards and over seventeen thousand dollars in financial assistance Wow! I'm Amazing. curious if, if you had the same experience that the fish food pantry had during COVID there was less of a need which seems counterintuitive mm -hmm. for the food pantry because people were getting uh, aid and stimulus checks and things like that yep. since COVID when those payments stopped and now inflation is going up. Now there's this huge need. Are you experiencing something similar? What did you go through during COVID and how, are, how have things changed since then? So um, we received a grant during COVID, so we had to spend all of that money, which was a little bit counterintuitive for us because we wanted to have people work to get that money right. because that's what we're trying to teach. Yeah. But we gave all of that away mm. and we were fine with that because that was the intent of the money. Um, now what we're experiencing is, um, not as much of a food insecurity, but there is a lot of um, rental insecurity. Oh, yeah. People are being displaced. We're having people who come in who are homeless, and that's tough because there is not a lot of affordable housing in the There's area. No and that's a huge, but that's not just a, that's just not a Lake Orion, Oxford, Auburn Hills problem. That's that's a statewide problem. Yeah, yes. and maybe I mean, even a nation, national. I yeah, mean, yeah. a nationwide problem. I mean, obviously, homelessness is out of control right now. In any major city you go to, you see the tent cities that are set up, and that's a major problem. And I can speak from experience. I'm a renter, and since 2015, my rent has doubled. Oh, wow. It's doubled. Wow. And, it's but when I say, oh, I'm, I'm going to get out of here, I'm going to go find someplace else, it's the same all over the place. Where can so you go? rents right. are skyrocketing. Right. So yep. I don't know what the answer is. I don't know what the solution is. You can help someone 
with rent this month, but right, what but about then what's going to happen next yeah. month? Um, I just had a, a meeting with a gentleman from Green Path, and he put me in touch with some renter resources. So we make sure that we're always staying up to date on those sort of resources for folks. So when they do come in, um, there are other agencies that we can refer them to where they right. can get some of that potential. If it's government assistance or local assistance, we're always trying to find that out. But then also encouraging folks, you know, if they have a job where they're not making enough, perhaps they can look for a different one or reach out to, like if it's in a family perhaps if you have you know someone else in the family of the household that can work like pull your resources and, and try to do something different because I mean rent prices all prices are going to be going up to stay for a while so yeah. we need to try to teach people different ways to think outside mm -hmm. of the box perhaps to, to help themselves yeah yeah one concern that I have is with all the new construction that's going on mm -hmm. on Lapeer Road there I don't know what they're going to be charging for those townhomes and condos, but that's going to have a ripple effect, and I'm sure that all the apartment complexes in the area are going to follow suit, whatever yep. they charge. So I don't think uh, there's a solution in the foreseeable future right now. So other than I know the governor has said that they're trying to uh, have uh, encouragement to build more and more housing, which will hopefully keep prices down. So. We'll what see. we really need are smaller homes that people yeah. can start off in instead Absolutely. of going for, you know, and I understand, you know, and we see a lot, I'm on the planning commission, that people want to build, you know, these bigger places and they're more expensive and we started 400000 that's not a starter home for someone. And nope. we always say, we always try to say, you know, but again, it's the developer that it's doing it, so we're always trying to say, hey, you know, attainable housing is a really good thing. What about like a... Somebody, somebody starting out with small children, maybe like a 1,200 square foot home instead. Absolutely. But you I mean, know what? Right. Didn't we all you know start we, in that size of a house, like when we got our first, I mean, it was eight right? to 1,200 square feet. Right. Yeah. They were, yeah. And everybody was just fine. It, it's hard <laughs> to build those, though. It's for them. It's what we're hearing, but, you know, yeah. we're always kind of trying to encourage put that. Put that out there is that would be wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> I be. also saw something recently that said, you know, 30, 40, 50 years ago, uh, the cost of housing represented a certain percentage of your mm -hmm. income, let's say 20% or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Today, it's closing in on like 40%, yep. 50% of yeah, your that's income. That's crazy. So yeah. you've got to take money away from other things just to have a yes. roof over your head. That's you do. amazing yeah. to me. So. Yeah. And, and you would not think that we have homeless folks in Oxford and Orion, but we do. Okay. Yeah, and the, you know, whenever we do the, the Oxford Orion uh, fish food drive, I always bring this up that you know, Oakland County is one of the wealthiest counties in the nation, not just Michigan. Yeah, yep. Yet, it's to me, it's shocking to find out that there's hunger, there's yeah. homelessness. That's going on uh, right here in these communities. Absolutely. So it's, it's great that an organization like yours is doing what you can to help these people out. If yeah, someone wants to reach out to you, how can they go about doing that? Yeah, um, they can visit our website, newly redesigned, um, mm -hmm. loveinkofnoc.org, yep. or if anyone that they know of needs assistance, they can call us at 248-693-4357. Awesome. And uh, I'll be at your event with my Yay, video camera to shoot you. some video. Hopefully <laughs> awesome. people won't roll their eyes when I turn on that bright light. But, uh, <laughs> it's all don't good. run away. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Well, thanks for coming out. And uh, we'll, we'll keep, uh, it's about a month away, so we'll help keep uh, spreading the word and uh, awesome. send some people your way. Yeah. Thank you so much. All right. Thanks for coming out.